Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard? Come on in, Alan. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. A fall table? Yeah. Why not? Don't we investigate science every uh, week? Yeah, but this has nothing to do with science. Well, you mean it's just sort of a game? Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, it's a very scientific game. Not only as a, you know, as a game itself, it's very scientific. In fact, it's all forms of geometry. Uh, but also, scientists use some of the principles in, in the billiard ball collisions to uh, explain some of the phenomenon. We'll talk about that later. Do uh, you know how to play pool? A little. Well, uh, how do you mean? Well, well you, play? Um, you see, my cousin has yes. um, a pool table down in his basement. And every once in a while, I go over and we... Play pool. Okay, well, uh, in a pool game, you have a ball, a cue ball, which we'll use for this, and you have another ball over here, and what's the object? Well, um, in pool, uh, you have to get it in the pockets. Okay, step right up. Let's see how good you are. <laughs> uh, one ball in the corner pocket. Didn't go in the corner pocket. Why not? Because I missed it. Why? Why did you miss? <laughs> Well, um, besides the fact that I'm bad, yes. um, I didn't hit it right. Well, you see, in the first place, there's a, the simplest shot in, in pool, yeah. you know, hitting one ball into the pocket, kind of a straight shot. And what you were really attempting to do, first of all, is to get that, the cue ball to go exactly the way you wanted it to. Mm -hmm. In other words, in the direct line, you had to hit that ball at exactly the right angle to make it go into that pocket. Yes. So one of the problems is actually using this cue itself. So let's play today without a cue. Without a cue? Yes. How can you play without a cue? Well. Oh, that's how. You can use this, you see. And now you can roll a ball down like that, and you can aim it. That's cheating. Well, it's it's not the way you play pool, but it is the way uh, we can find out. Uh, well, first of all, let's, we want to clear all the balls and get them up on that yeah. corner. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. If you do it right, the pool table is a very flat, smooth surface. Mm -hmm. You see this line going down there? Yes. Okay, now, now what you have to do when you line up the ball, you have to try to get it to go exactly down the line that you want. You want to go around behind there and aim, aim down the, the trough and see if, you, if this is lined up right down that line. Um, if not, yeah. go ahead. Is that it? Yes. Okay, now try running a ball down. All right. Well, you were pretty close. It was off just a fraction, maybe about like that. Still off, just a bit. Now we're too much. Anyway, you get the idea? You can now yeah. use this as the, as the, um, the cue. Cue stick. So that you always get the same line going down. Now, let us set up a, a typical shot. Here's the ball. Yes. I want it to go in that pocket. Here's this. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to, uh, if this is the cue ball, mm -hmm. and if this is the cue stick, I want to hit the cue ball and get the cue ball to hit right on the side so it'll set it off on that angle. Okay, go ahead. Try it. Are you at the right angle? Let me adjust my... Yeah. Now, you were uh, considerably uh, off. Now, come on yeah. around over here and let me see if I can show you exactly the right angle that you're supposed to hit at. If we take one ball, yeah. we can, and let's, let's do it like the professionals do. We'll set the shot up, see? Okay. So here's a line that goes over to that pocket. That ball, this ball, has to be set someplace along that line, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. This ball is going to come down someplace along this line. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is set the two balls so both of them are on their right line. Oh. And the point of impact is right down there. right above the line. Now, does that look right? This ball is going to come, no, it's not quite. This ball is going to come like that. This ball is going to come like that. And center point of impact should be right over. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure whether it's lined up exactly. But now, theoretically, that ball should go in that corner pocket. All right, you ready? Oh, I guess so. Love the way. Right in. Now, you get the idea of what you have to do? Mm -hmm. Point is, you have to line two balls up and find a point of impact directly in line with that pocket or wherever it wanted to go. Now, that, that's, you see, geometry. 
Yeah, just like Jim. Here's an impact here. Transfer of energy this way. And notice what happened to this ball. That one went along that line. Yes, it went along that line, bounced and came back. Well, this is something that scientists have to know about, too. You see that book over there? Yes. Well, see what it says? Nuclear physics in photographs. Yes. Oh. All right. If you open the book over here to this page, look what you see. Um, what is that? Says... Well, these are protons hitting other protons. Oh. ball-like things, you know. Yes. And look, here's the one coming down the track. And here's the one that went off into the pocket, and there's and where the other ball went that way. Just like the, um... Yeah. Just the, like the uh, billiard balls. balls. In fact, they, they call it billiard ball collisions or billiard ball impacts. What's the difference between a billiard ball and these balls? What is billiards? Um, well, billiards, I think, is when you, um, you just hit it off the sides. Yeah, there are no pockets, and you just have to bounce them into corners and try to hit other balls and so forth. While in pool, there are pockets so that the balls go in. But anyway, there you see, here's, here's some more on the other pages, you see, mm -hmm. in which... Uh, you can actually see the, uh, the tracks made in bubble chambers and in, the, and in cloud chambers of the collisions of these things. So there you are. You're, you're talking about nuclear physics. How about that? Same I'm idea. Just using a pool table. Yeah. Well, let's set up a little harder shot. Okay. Uh, we'll use this as the, as the um, cue uh, again. And I want you to roll this ball down here so that it goes in that corner pocket by hitting it against the cushion over there. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? I missed the easy one. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you'll get the harder one. What are you going to do? Well, let's see. I want to figure out an angle so that it, when it hits there... It'll, it'll go over there. Go into there. Okay, figure out the angle and go ahead and try it. Pretty close. Pretty now, close. what were you doing when you went like that? Well, I went like that and yeah. then like that to see what? if it was along the same angle. Oh, in other words... What you have to do with that, that uh, cushion up there is to get the ball to hit at one angle and then come off at the same angle. Mm -hmm. In fact, you see that other line over there? Yes. You line it up with that. Okay. Now, notice that this line, there are little dots along the side of the pool table. Yeah. Those little dots are used by, uh, you know, the guys who really know what they're doing. To line up shots like this. Oh. This, if this ball continues along that line, you see it's going to hit right in line with that dot. Mm -hmm. It'll bounce over there and go right back into the corner over there if you've done it properly. Oh. Well, go ahead, try I just it. hope I do it properly then. Arms away. Right in. Congratulations. Let's go around and look at those angles over there now. The ball comes down at this angle. Now watch the angle at which it hits and see if it follows those two white lines. Well, pretty close. Pretty close. Haven't you, excuse me, let me sit down over here. Okay. Haven't you ever seen something else in science that works like this, in which something comes in at an angle like this, hits something and bounces off? What if that were a mirror? What would this be? Well, um, it would be a ray. Yes, possibly. a ray of light. Yeah. A ray of light. And the, this, this angle right here, or actually from the diagonal, would be called the angle of incidence, and this one is the angle of reflection. And is it, is it the same? Yes. These, the, you, ordinarily, the angle is figured from the perpendicular, but it works just as well to figure the angle down here. This angle and this angle are exactly the same. Oh, so that's how you line it up. That's how you line it up. What you have to do is draw a line from the pocket to over here where the corner, to the side, and then draw a line in your eye, you know, you're doing this, with, your, with the balls that comes in here and find the spot on here in which the angle of bounce is equal to the, the angle of impact is equal to the angle of bounce. And when you do that, the ball should go right in the pocket. Right in. Now, also, this could be the side of a container, like a uh, balloon. And, oh. if, and if this were a molecule that was coming along here... It would hit and then go right off. Yes, and it, the angle at which it hits would be the exact the angle that it went off, too. So you see, here's another example of geometry. Mm-hmm. We had a little of that last year you did. In, new, in modern math. Well, did you talk about measuring these angles? Just a little. Yeah, but the, from the perpendicular, usually. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay, well, I didn't draw the perpendicular in here, but you could see how you have to measure these angles with your eye when you set up a shot and see if you can't bounce. Of course, the problem is even more complicated because what you're not, you're not just using one ball, you're using two. Because you're running this ball down and you're... Uh. Didn't make it. <laughs> so, so not only do you have... Hey, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't use a cue. Yeah. What, you, what you need to do then is to be sure that you hit the ball at the right angle to get it to hit the corner. Mm -hmm. like well, there you see, so now we've uh, found angle of incidence equals angle of reflection with, uh, with billiard balls as well. I never knew Paul could be so scientific. Now, let's look at something else. If we put this back here where it was before, yes. you take one, take one ball, and I'll put four of them down here like this, and I have a little track to line them up with. Let's assume that all the balls are lined up like this. And right. you now roll one ball down. What should happen to these? Well, um, when I roll this ball down, it's going to hit this ball, and this ball will um, hit this ball, and so on, and then this ball will move out. Okay. Try it. Okay. Try it. I hope. Very good. That was right. All right. Now, two? I have to get some more balls. Yeah. Try it with two. You know, the balls come down in the pockets and run down a little track and come yeah. down over here. Try it with you. You have two balls, and I'll put four up here. What should happen this time? Well, uh, let me think. The, um, oh, it's, um, double. The, uh, force is double because there are two mm -hmm. balls, so it's twice as, um, strong. And, um, it's going to send two of the balls on the front board, I think. Okay, try it. Very good. That was right. Yeah. And three. <laughs> well, now the uh, the force will be tripled. How many balls is that? I have uh, six down here, and you're going to roll three. How many should come out? Um, three. I think. They're not quite in line. Okay. Ready? There. See the three go out? Yeah. Now, this, this is a, an important principle of science. Here, come on around here so okay. I can show you. If you have a mass here, yes. and you now have a mass coming down here, mm -hmm. the energy that it has is going to be transferred from one ball to the next. And if you have this much mass, this much will come out. If you have two ma in a, in a mass twice as much, two are going to come out here. Oh. Have you ever seen those balls hung from strings that they... Swing back and forth in science fairs and in the, oh, yeah, the museum they... and things like that. Well, the same principle applies here in, in the pool. If you have two balls exactly touching here like this, and if you'll notice players coming over to see whether they're exactly touching, then you have to treat this entirely differently because you have to hit this one at just the right angle to make that one go off in this direction. Mm -hmm. Can you make it go off in that direction? Uh, I don't uh -uh. think so. There's no. only one point of contact. That's right. Okay, well now, so you see that the amount of energy that's, that you're going to give to the system is the amount that you're going to get out at the other end. But I think maybe we ought now to investigate the fact that the ball has two kinds of energies as it goes down that track. Two. And also when you use it with a cue. Go ahead, roll it down there. All right. Wait, wait, let me clear this out. Yeah. Okay, now try it. Hey, good shot. Uh, one kind of energy is what? Well, gravity's pulling down and it makes it go forward. Okay, and it has... It has forward motion. Mm -hmm. But now take a good look at the ball again. See if you can find another kind. Another kind? Yes. See the stripe on the ball? Yeah. Oh, watch it. Well, the stripe goes around. Yes, doesn't it? Well, of course. It's spinning. Yes. That's the other That's one? That's the other kind of energy, yes. See, there are two kinds of energies. One, the forward motion, gravity pulling down on the ball, but that's like the ball dropped from there to there, isn't it? Yes. But also, the ball is spinning. And that spin is very important as far as the ball is concerned. Oh. In fact, I'm going to set up a little uh, question for you and see if you can figure out what the correct answer is after I've set it up. Okay. If we put that track like that, and you get ready to roll that ball down. Yes. And I'll put a ball out here that it's going to hit. Okay? And I'll put another ball out here that is going to be hit also, but not by rolling. No? No. We're going to use... A special kind of pool ball that I rigged up so it could swing like a pendulum. Same sort of ball, you know, exactly. Yes. It's a little high. Let me put it down so it hits it just... Is it touching the table now? No, it's about... Maybe the snout, yeah. Oops, I had my finger on the string. Um, it's about... Good enough? Well, it's about... Oh, it's up a little inch. too high, yes. You should get it so it hits right at the... 
Right there. Okay. Now we'll line this ball up so it is just going to touch that ball. All right. Like that. Now see, these two balls are at the same distance. You know, they're starting here. We're going to knock them down that way, and they're both the same distance. Right. Now, you hold that ball on the track, line the track up so it's about as straight, and I have a pair of uh, calipers here. And if I hold this up here, you can move the ball up the incline until the top of the ball just touches it. Oh, all right. Let's see. You get the idea? Uh-huh. Back like that. Okay? Right there. Now, you're going to let that ball go. What's it going to happen to it here? It's going to send that one flying. It's going to send this one flying, and it's going to go up and hit the, the rail and come back. Uh-huh. And we'll leave that where it is. All right. Okay. Now, put that ball down for a minute. Just, yeah, just, and I'll pick up this one. Okay. Pick up this one. And we're going to move that back exactly the same distance. See, so it's exactly the same height. And then you're right simply there. going to let it go, and it's going to come and hit this ball, right? Yes. And it's going to send that ball flying over there. What I want you to tell me is which ball will go the farther. That one hit by that ball coming down the incline, or this one? That one. This one over here. Okay, let's try it. Up on the track. Okay. Uh, back up just a trifle, just so it touches. Okay, let it go. That mm -hmm. goes to there. Now I'll move it over so we... Okay. Now, let's see. Move this one back to here. Just a little more. There. Okay. Well, the other one went more. Yes. But that one was spinning. That one should have more power or force. Ah, I see what your problem is. Let's do that over here again. As this ball comes down the track, mm -hmm. some of the energy of the ball must be absorbed in the spin, because in order to turn, it must get energy from someplace. And when that ball hits here, that spinning energy has to be translated to this one, and some of it isn't translated. In fact, if you put it here like this, watch what happens to that ball. Okay. See it roll? Mm-hmm. But I thought that if it was spinning, it would, um, the force would be greater. Well, it isn't, because what happens is, as it's, so, first of all, some of the energy has to be absorbed in the spin, and the second, it doesn't transfer all of its energy over here. When it hits this ball like this, this ball still has some, and it keeps rolling. Oh. You see that? Did you notice it? Yeah. While over here, in this case, this ball doesn't move at all, does it? No, it try, just... Try it again once. Transfers all its energy to the um, one ball there that's going to hit. See? It stops. So all of the energy that's transferred over to this ball, so obviously it goes further. Mm-hmm. So there you see that... The whole idea of spin is very important in, in pool, and it's very important in molecules, too, because they're spinning. In fact, uh, uh, let's see if I can show you. I'm not much of an expert. But the whole idea of spin is very important to a pool player because watch what happens to the ball as it hits the side uh, of the uh, cushion over there. Right. I'll hit it straight, first of all. See the forward spin? Now see how the spin changed? Yeah. It, um, first it was going forward, and when it first hit First it was rolling like this, wasn't it? Uh-huh, and then when it, when it hit, hit, it was it going like, like that. that. Yeah, so that spin makes, uh, uh, affects what happens over there. This time, I'm going to hit the ball, but not right in the center like you normally do. I'm going to hit it off to one side, about like that. What should happen to the ball? Because well, it'll start spinning like this. It'll start spinning like this, won't it, mm -hmm. as it goes along here. And what should happen then when it hits that side over there? Well, it'll bounce off and it'll spin the other way. Will it go this way? Um, Along that line, if I start here? If it's spinning like this... Yes. No, it'll, wait a minute, it'll... And it hits that corner and it's got some spin on it, what should happen to it? It should go inside of the line. Yes, it should come back over on that side. Well, let me try it. And you know they always put chalk on the cue, so it yeah. won't slip. Throw it off. I'll try to hit the ball just a little off-center and see if it does. It should go on this side of the line, right? Right. See it? Yep. Here, you try it now. Hey, you got one in. Yes. <laughs> it's a little long for you to go. <laughs> OK. All right, you ready? There, see? It came way over here. Yeah. Well, I tried to help right. you a little bit. Now, yeah, you can see that, that if a, a good uh, pool player 
didn't want wanted the ball to go down this line, but didn't want it to go down this line, he could put that known as English on the ball and he could make it come here. What if he hit it on the other side? Then it would uh, spin on the outside. It would spin and go on the outside. What if he put it spin on the top? It would go straight. Yeah, it would go straight, but when it hit here, it would bounce off with more energy and probably go further. Mm -hmm. And what happened if you wanted to, if you hit it low? Um, I don't think it would go as far because you're, for instance, you're pushing. Um, In other words, the front the, out of you're you're way. taking some of this spin off of it. Yes. In fact, this is what they do when they put a ball down here, and they want to hit it, and they don't want that ball to go in the this ball to go in the pocket. You know, they put English on this, so when it hits it, it'll spin off and curve around or put. Or put uh, backspin on it. See that ball stop? Yeah. See, it went back. It didn't roll forward like before. So the whole idea of, of controlling not only the direction of the ball, the angle at which it hits, but the spin, you see, is very important. So you're, you're talking not only geometry, but the laws of mechanics as the ball rolls and spins. All right, now, why does the ball stop? Well, it See? has to stop eventually. Yeah, but why? It's nice rolling along. It hits the cushion. You know, why does it slow up? Well, it, it loses its force. Why? Now, tell me, what's, what are all the forces on that ball that prevent it from rolling? Well, uh, let's see. You have friction, first of all. From where? From the air and from the... Um, from the cloth on the table. The cloth. Okay, that's uh, two. And then when, when you hit it against the side, um, then some of the energy is absorbed. Is absorbed. In, this is a rubber cushion here. And you have to compress the cushion, and so some of the energy is lost there. And when two balls collide, they're not perfectly elastic, so some of the energy is lost in the collision. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you like to play a game of pool in which you had uh, no friction on the table at all, or almost none? So every time you uh, sent the ball across like this, it would keep going bouncing all over. Wouldn't that be a great game? Yeah, I don't see how you could do it. Well, uh, uh, Professor Harold Daw at uh, New Mexico State University designed a table that instead of having cloth on it, well, I won't tell you. See if you can figure it out. Here it is over here. This is a pool table. Well, it's kind of a small version of a pool table. And instead of having round balls, he made things that look something like hockey pucks. Yeah, they do. The now, notice if you push them, they, they slide because of the friction on it. Yes, but, but they if, stop, too. I'll just turn on this little switch here and watch what happens. They don't stop. No. Going. Why? Well, uh, there are little holes in here. Yes. That motor that I turned on over there is the more motor of a vacuum cleaner in the blower end. And I can control the speed of it over here. I'll turn it down a bit. And here, see that little piece of paper? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me get this. If you put it right over one of the holes, see it? There are all little holes, almost invisible holes in here in which there's air coming out. And that, that keeps it going. Okay, now tell me, why does that affect that, that, uh, well, that it's, disc? Well, it's, um, you see, the air comes up, and it forms a layer of air between the disc and That's the, That's right. Uh, so table. it's floating on a little layer of air. You hear that noise? Those are piano wires, which, uh, Dr. Daw put around the side so that the energy would be absorbed by the piano wire and then it pushed back and so it bounces up, you know, with pretty good elasticity. Won't this eventually stop? Oh yes, eventually it stopped because you have, after all, the noise, you can tell there must be some energy being absorbed in the wire mm -hmm. and there's some slight friction. There it goes. Back and forth. Now, you remember what we did with the pool ball? In order to make a bank shot, remember you have to go like that, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection? Yes. Works the same idea, the same way. Well, it's now, going. now, what happens if we put two of them? This could be the one ball, this could be the cue ball, that could... And I tried to get the table as level as I could, because if it's not level, they'll start drifting. Watch what happens. See what I mean? They'd go on for a long yeah. time, wouldn't they? You'd have a terrible time trying to figure out the shot. Take a year and a day. See if I could get it in the corner pocket. Missed it. Hard. But here you see the same problem. This, these could be molecules, could. you know, dashing about in here. Going all well over the place. Now, you remember when we transferred, uh, had two balls rolling down the incline and three balls and so forth? Yes. This time, instead of doing that, we have a large puck and a small puck. What should happen when they collide? Let's say this one is moving. All right. What will happen when it hits this one? Well, the energy of this one is trans 
thread into this one. Yes, but now because this is a fixed mass, if the, if, there, if this hits with a lot of energy and it transfers a lot of it to here, that you can't have two or three of these going out. What's going to happen to that as far as the speed is concerned? Well, this is going to go very fast. It should fast. go fast, shouldn't it, as you transfer the energy. In fact, this one doesn't even have to slow much up in order to transfer enough energy to get that one going fast. Watch, I'll show you. Three times as fast. Yeah. Back and forth. Wow. I wouldn't want to play full with those. Notice how this ends up going back and forth here? Yes. I'll try. You see why? See that little black mark on there? Watch the spin of it. It's spinning around. See how it spins? Uh -huh. But notice how the spin finally dampens it out so that it goes straight and back and forth. Watch it again. It's just like the pool ball that we were talking about. See? Back and forth. See, if it's coming along like this and it's spinning in this direction, some of that bounce is going to be taken out and it's going to come back off. What? Yeah? Yes. It should go like that and over like that, but if it's spinning, So that when you send one around, eventually the spin gets it to go. The spin stops and it goes. Whoops. <laughs> a little more air there. Or else there's a piece of dirt. You see, this has to be absolutely clean, free of dust, because any kind of little piece of dust in there will uh, interfere with it. Well, now, you remember we talked about the. the uh... Stop! <laughs> We talked about molecules of air inside a container. Yes. We could have a lot of molecules inside a container like this, too, couldn't we? This could be air inside of a balloon, for example. These could be oxygen molecules and nitrogen molecules and carbon dioxide molecules. And they're all banging around, and, and always the inc angle of incident will equal the angle of reflection. If there's any spin, that will affect it. And the energy, when they transfer from one to the other, should be conserved. Yes. So we can start moving these around. You push one, and then I'll push. One, and we'll see what it looks like when molecules inside a container actually collide. First, I'll start, and then you.